Our objective today is I can use the place value sections method for division. Let's get started. I really like the place value sections method for division because it relates so well to the multiplication place value sections method. And I know multiplication and division are inverse operations of each other. So it's just undoing the multiplication and it goes across this way, like place value does, the place value model for multiplication. So when I start, I have it all set up. This is my original problem, 738 divided by 6. I know the bigger number is the total, and that is my divisor, sorry, my dividend. And the smaller number here is my divisor. I created a tic-tac-toe for my divisor 6, so I have my multiples of 6 over here, and I'm ready to go. So first, I am trying to divide 738 into groups of 6. I'm going to look at just the 7, and it's not just a 7, it's actually a 700, and I want to divide 700 into 6 groups. How many times can I divide 7 into 6, sorry, how many times can I divide, can I divide 700 into 6? So I'm a visual learner, and I like to um, write it out. So I know I'm looking for 6 times 100's digit that will give me 700, or 700 divided by 6 equals 100's digit. And... If I look up here, I know I'm looking for a hundreds digit um, that I can multiply by six to give me 700. So I'm looking at my tic-tac-toe and I think, well, I could probably find a, six, uh, a one digit number that will give me a seven maybe. Let's see. So six times one is six. Mm, that's not a seven. So. I think the only thing that will work for right now is six times one would equal six. So if that turned into a hundredths digit, it would be six times a hundred, and that would be 600. Now, I know that 600 is close to 700. Well, not quite close, it's a hundred digits off, but it's close, and we might be able to find something closer, so let's try the next digit after 1, 6 times 2, which if I look at my tic-tac-toe is a 12, but if I turn the 2 into a hundreds digit, then 6 times 200 would be 1,200, because I know if I have two zeros in my factors, then I need two zeros in my product. And 1,200 is a lot bigger than 700. That was my goal. So I think the only thing that will work is this, this one, the 600, which I know I multiplied 100 times 6 to get that number. But really, it's, uh, it's 600 divided by 6 is 100 if I do the inverse. So this is the one that's going to work. This is the mystery number I was looking for, and I'm going to write it up here. So 6 times 100, 6 times 100 is 600. So I will write that here after I multiply. Then I can subtract. So 8 minus 0 is 8, 3 minus 0 is 3, 7 minus 6 is 1. So my difference is 138. And I need to carry that up into my tens digit box. Now that it's in the tens digit box, I know I'm looking for a tens factor that can I can multiply by six that can get me really close to 130. Since the three is in the tens, I'm looking for something close to 130. So like I said, I'm a visual learner. I like to write it out. So six times what 10-digit number could give me something that's close to 130 or exactly 130. So let me, let me do some trying out some numbers. Six times one is six. But if I turn that one into a 10-digit, six times 10 is 60. 
and 60 is a lot less than 130. I think I could get a little closer. Let's try. So six times the next digit up would be two. Six times two is, is 12. And if I turn the two into a tens digit number, since I am looking for a tens digit number up here, six times 20 is 120. Since I have one zero in my factor, I need one in my product. 120 is pretty close to 130, but let's see if I can get even closer. So I'll do six times three, which is 18. If I turn the three into a tens digit number, it'd be six times 30, which would be 180. And 180 is a lot bigger than 130, which was my goal. So I think the closest one and the best one is 120. I can't go over 130. I can either be exactly that or a little bit less. So this is the best option and I got it by multiplying by 20. So I will put the two up here in my quotient and then I'm doing 20 times six, which I already did over here, is 120. So I will write it in my tens place value section and then I can subtract. Eight minus zero is eight. 3 minus 2 is 1, 1 minus 1 is 0. Okay, my difference is 18, and I can carry, bring over that 18 into my 1's place value box, and I know I'm looking for a one-digit number that I can multiply by 6 that gives me 18, or really close to 18. So let me think, 6 times what one digit could give me 18 or something really close to that. Well, let's see. I know six times one is six. That's not big enough. I could also look over here because this shows six times one is six. Six times two is 12 and six times three is 18 and that is the perfect number that I'm looking for. So six times three is 18 or 18 18 divided by 6 is 3. So I know I need to put a 3 up in my quotient, and then I can do 3 times 6, which I know is 18. I will write 18 right here, and then I will subtract. 18 minus 18 is 0. So I don't have a remainder, and I don't have any other numbers to carry over. And there's one last thing I need to do, which is look at these three numbers that I got in my quotient, I have my ones digit number, my tens digit number, and my hundredths digit number. And I need to add these together to find the total quotient. I could do that in my head, but just to be safe, I'm going to write it down here and line up those place values and add it together. So three, plus zeros is three, two plus one, one, two plus zero is two, and then one plus zero is one. So my quotient or my answer is 123. Now that you've seen me divide using the place value sections model, I want you to try these three problems. And I've written them down for you. We have 834 divided by six, this first one, I drew what your model should look like and kind of scaffolded it for you. So you know, first you're looking for a hundredths digit number times six to get you close to 800. And then as you go along, you're looking for the tens digit number and then a ones digit number. So try these out, try your best, and let me know if you have any questions. Good luck.